Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got some very interesting bodybuilding updates So let's start with Nick Walker with a back lat spread shot that he just posted Now some of you might be thinking, well, what's so special about his shot? I mean, Nick always had a great back, right? No, you would be wrong, halfway wrong Nick always did have, not really always, but he managed to build a really good back at some point and yeah, his back double bicep was amazing, but let me refresh your memory about the back lat spread. Before we take a look at the back lat spread, let's check out the back double bicep once again. So here you can see his New York Pro version 2021 and also the Arnold Classic from the same year. And you can see the difference between that year and then you can see on the right his Mr. Olympia 2022 version where his back was significantly improved in the back double bicep. So he improved this pose significantly, it wasn't bad to begin with, but it needed a little bit of improvement and he did just that, he improved it and now it's a really good back double bicep. However, back lat spread was a different story. Here you can see him from the Mr. Olympia 2022, his last Mr. Olympia, and it definitely didn't look as good as the back double bicep. Lower body, of course, is still amazing, but as far as the back itself, he wasn't hitting it exactly the best way possible. I think he wasn't really opening up fully. But if I remember correctly, when he would open up more, he would lose all the details in the back. It would just be all washed up. But even like this, he is not fully opened up and you don't see a lot of details. You can't see where the lats are inserting, you can't really see clear lines in the traps and rhomboids. His back lat spread was never a good pose, it was arguably one of his worst poses, along with his uh, front lat spread as well, so his lat spreads both are not very good. The back one is better because of the lower body from behind, but you know, upper body, back itself, in the back lat spread wasn't great. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great as his back double bicep. Here is 2021, a year before, so here it was even worse. As you can see, he was more narrow in the shoulders, so he wasn't as wide as he is today, and I think he had even less details. Here he's standing next to Steve Kuklo and Ian Wallier, and honestly, Ian is probably looking the best in this shot overall. Nick is looking more comparable to Steve Kukla, I mean, their backs are more similar here, so Nick definitely needed to make certain improvements in his back, especially the way he is hitting this pose and improvements to make this pose look better. And I think he accomplished just that. I think he added more meat, more tissue to his lower back. You can see his lower back thickness right now and it's kind of separating like Heidi Japan's back in the back lat spread. Not quite as good, but close, close, definitely much better than ever before. Also, he's opening up way more. His shoulders are looking much, much wider now and his lats are popping out nicely and he's not losing any details in his upper back. Now you can clearly see the lines of traps, of rhomboids everything is just showing it separated and he has four almost four weeks to go so he's gonna get even more detailed even more shredded and it's gonna look just better with time and man i gotta tell you this is why i'm such a fan of nick walker this is the guy that just keeps improving year after year he's losing all of his weaknesses anything that he can change he's basically changing, I mean, he can't change the length of his legs, unfortunately, or like the, the shape of his quads and stuff like that, but what he can do, muscularity-wise, he does that, and he's extremely devoted, super committed, and when he decides to improve a body part, he obviously always accomplishes that, and that is exactly what bodybuilding is, guys, that's the essence of bodybuilding, building a body, building up the muscles that you're lacking, improving your weak points, and that is exactly what Nick Walker is doing right now. Now, as far as his conditioning at the four or three and a half weeks out of New York Pro, man, it's phenomenal. It's great. He's looking awesome. And I'm going to make a video about the New York Pro and the preview of it because a lot of great bodybuilders are entering it, and I think we're going to have more bodybuilders entering it. Uh, but like, as far as Nick Walker potentially losing it, I mean, the only way this can happen is if he comes in completely off. How would it be possible for him to come off if he is in this shape right now? I mean, he needs to mess something up really bad. God forbid, but like maybe another injury 
or I don't know, he does some crazy new peak week protocol that backfires, but if he doesn't do anything special and just cruise into the show, yeah, he's got it, he's got it, let's be real, I don't think anybody can beat him, but like there are a lot of guys, it's not like two or three guys, there is like five, six great bodybuilders doing the New York Pro, some of them are like top eight or top six Olympians potentially, so it's not gonna be easy like defeating them all, but as long as he comes in, you know, like this basically, maybe a tad bit drier, if that much, I think there are only three guys, maybe four, that can stop Nick Walker right now, and of course, that's Derek Lansford, Harry Japan, and Samson Daur, and let's say one more guy, like an improved version of Hunter Labrada, Andrew Jack, or Brandon Curry, but the guys who are doing the New York Pro are like top eight at best, so yeah, as long as everything goes well for Nick, he's got this, but it's not in the bag yet, let's wait and see. Alright, the next guy I wanted to talk about is Goodwito, who just posted a new photo, now, is this photo new? Is it recent? Or is it from his prep files? I don't know, and I don't think anybody can know, really. Yeah, sure, he looks very dry, it's probably from his peak week, because I don't think he walks around looking this dry, but it's not impossible. And I wanted to mention this because I watched Nick Strength and Powers video. I clicked on it because he said something about Goodwin to doing the New York Pro as well. And I thought maybe he had some new information. But what he was saying is basically that based on his previous video, this video, Goodwin doesn't look like he's gonna do the New York Pro. I don't wanna sound like a hater, but that's kinda exactly what I'm gonna do. This is basically the reason why I didn't like to watch Nick Strength and Power even before I made my channel, because the guy doesn't understand bodybuilding, he doesn't have any experience. He doesn't know that after a show, when you are super shredded, you can literally eat junk food all day long for like a week, and then you just do a depletion, you increase your water, you keep your salt low, you do a lot of cardio, you go back to the prep mode, and in a week, you're gonna be just as dry as you were on the day of the show, literally. And I know this from experience, because I've done this, exactly like this. And I'm sure you have as well, if some of you are competitors here. When you are that lean, when your metabolism is running super fast, there is no chance of gaining any fat in a week or even two weeks, no matter what you do. Especially if you stay on, on some stuff, not a lot. And even if you gain some, and sure, you will probably gain some, it won't be visible, but you will gain some, you will lose it in another week of dieting, and that's it. And I mean, I don't blame Nick for not knowing this kind of stuff, he's not a competitor again, but, you know, he has the number one channel, and he speaks a lot of nonsense very often, and that's why I can't listen to him as an experienced competitor. But, it is what it is, I just wanna say, if Goodwito wants to do the New York Pro, he can, <laughs> he can get even more shredded, easily more shredded than he was at Detroit Pro if he wants to do that show. And I think he should do the New York Pro because a lot of great competitors are doing it. It will be a really awesome experience to stand next to all of those top guys, to stand next to Nick Walker and to potentially place very highly because I think he has a chance of defeating Martin Fitzwater if he nails peak better, if he gets even a little bit sharper maybe. Goodwito is an amazing bodybuilder, he has crazy physique and with a little bit of improvements he can be one of the top guys and I think he will be in a couple of years. But as far as the New York Pro, I think he should do it, I don't know if he will, if he wants to, he can and he will look great, and that's all I'm gonna say, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next up we got a physique update from Stefan Matala, posted by his coach Patrick Tour, and I gotta say, whatever Patrick is doing, again, it's working, it's working really well, because Stefan is just looking better and better each update, he just keeps getting harder and fuller and leaner at the same time, and this is only one third of the prep. Now, again, I think Patrick is an amazing coach. If I chose one of the top coaches right now, it would probably be either him or Stefan Kinzel. And as far as Patrick is a person, after all this confrontation with Milos Archev, they kinda resolved it. Not really, they're still in a conflict. Basically, what uh, Patrick said is he apologized to Milos for acting uh, like he doesn't know what Milos was talking about, but really, he did have a lot of contact with Milos, but he didn't see that as coaching, and Milos did. Also, Patrick says he never did 
the protocols that Milos told him to do, but Milos says that Patrick told him he was doing it. Also, Patrick says that he doesn't remember certain things that Milos mentions, which I think is normal, it's been like almost 30 years, I don't think Milos made it up, and I think Milos remembers everything exactly, it's probably Patrick who forgot certain things, so I think it's a big misunderstanding, Patrick apologized for certain things, but Milos is still mad about other things, whatever, it is what it is. Patrick, as a coach, is killing it lately, so as you can see, Stefan Matala is looking phenomenal right now, and he's only gonna get better from this point on. How good can he get? Where is his maximum potential? I feel like this guy has so much potential, not only for Classic, but like for the Open. He doesn't have any desire to do the Open, but with his shape, with his structure, I think he can do it, and do it really well, but as far as Classic physique this year, I mean, this guy needed a coach, and I think Patrick is a great fit for him, not only for his knowledge, but because of his psychological approach. I think this is gonna click very well. I think it is clicking already. I think this guy is gonna win a pro show and go to the Mr. Olympia and be one of the top 10 guys at his first Mr. Olympia. Mark my words. And for the end, we got something also very interesting. Uh, Elliot Derman, the new guy, the amateur guy that I recently made a video about, is starting his prep. And this is what he looks like right now, I mean, it looks like he gained even more muscle from the last time he was shredded, which was obviously the goal, but at this point it started to look kind of ridiculous, like, is there any more room to put on muscle in this shot? Like, on the legs? <laughs> I don't see it, chest, uh, arms, everything is just looking super dense, super thick, I can't wait to see this guy finally shredded, I think he's winning a pro card rather easily, I just wonder where he will place at his first pro debut, hopefully he will do it this year as well, because this is already a pro physique, but is this physique gonna be able to win a pro show? Well, if all of his shots looked like these front shots, like most muscular, like front double, like front lat, sure, then he would be winning pro shows, but the truth is, just like many newer bodybuilders, he's lacking a back. His back is like a very weak body part for him, hopefully he will improve that over time, I think a lot of great bodybuilders had weak backs at the beginning of their careers, just like Nick Walker who we just talked about, he improved it, so I think this guy, I mean he has obviously great potential for gaining muscle, I don't think his insertions on his back are bad, maybe just a training problem, we'll see, but he obviously has the ability to grow muscle fast, and I think by the time his career is like at its peak, his back is gonna be up to par. But as of right now, all of his front shots, side shots are looking ridiculous, and I can't wait to see this guy shredded, because it's gonna be, it's gonna look nutty, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.